Shalom, friends. I speak to you at a difficult moment in our nation's history. As we all know, nine days ago, police officers in Minneapolis used brutal tactics against George Floyd, an unarmed African-American who was already handcuffed and posed no threats to the officers present. One of the officers had his knee on Mr. Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes. 16 times Mr. Floyd can be heard saying, I can't breathe. And yet not one of those pleas moved the officers to change their behavior. This violent treatment of Mr. Floyd led to his immediate death. To paraphrase from the statement made by the rabbinical assembly, while the overwhelming majority of police officers are good and decent people, people who have very difficult jobs and do them well, it is clear that they and others entrusted with their oversight have not been able to make the necessary changes to a system that disproportionately targets minority communities and people, peoples of color. This killing of Mr. Floyd has sparked protests in every single state, as well as protests around the world condemning police violence and institutional racism. Nonviolent protests are one of the great features of our democracy. Nonviolent protests empower people, giving them a voice and enabling them to assert their dignity. And on a policy level, nonviolent protests can lead to social change. The protesters who have turned to violence and looting are committing crimes and are desecrating the memory of George Floyd. Agitators, anarchists, and other outsiders who are using this tragedy and this moment of unrest to wreak havoc, they are morally abominable. The Torah has a lot to say about these issues, which have become front and center in the world today. Last Friday, we observed the holiday of Shavuot, the holiday in which we celebrate the giving of the Torah, and we read the portion in the Torah in which God gives the children of Israel the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. And we also read the preceding chapter, in which God says to the children of Israel, if you obey my laws and follow my covenant, then you will be mamlechet koanim v'goy kadosh. You will be a nation of priests and a holy nation. When we open ourselves up to the mitzvot and the ethical insights of the Torah, when we try to observe the values of our tradition faithfully, and when we strive to bring to life the most powerful teachings of our tradition, then we can build something beautiful and praiseworthy, a just and caring society. Then we can be a holy nation and we can be a moral example to others. The first and for me, most profound value in the Torah comes right at the very beginning with the creation of the human being, the creation of Adam. The Torah says, Elohim et Adam b'tzalmo, b'tzalem Elohim barauto. And God created Adam in his image, in the image of God, he created him. This teaches us that all people are created in the image of God, that every single human being is holy and created with an inherent dignity which should be honored and respected. Our ancient rabbis knew this, and they created a beautiful teaching based on this, based on this question of why did God create all of humanity from just one being, from Adam? And the answer, I'll put it in modern terms. So no one can justify racism, so no one can have a claim to bigotry. Or said in the words of the Talmud, so no one can say my ancestor is greater than your ancestor. The rabbis continue and they, they give another answer to this question. And they say, the first human being was created in the image of God. All human beings are created in the image of God. Therefore, if someone saves one life, it's as if they've saved a whole world. And if someone takes one life, it's as if they have destroyed a whole world. As we look at our society today, as we look at the aspects of our society, which are unjust and unequal, will we take these powerful words to heart? As one of my teachers, Rabbi Shai Held, asks, do we believe, I mean truly believe, that all human beings are equal? 
Do we know in our minds, in our hearts, and in our guts that a black child is as infinitely valuable as a white child? That a black adolescent has the same opportunities as a white adolescent? That a black man under arrest deserves to receive the exact same treatment as a white man? These are the questions we need to be wrestling with as individuals, families, and communities, especially faith communities. Are we going to speak out or are we going to be silent? Are we going to be part of the solution or are we going to remain on the sidelines? Are we going to try to help move our society forward to a place where all people are treated with dignity? Or are we going to allow horrific indignities to remain commonplace? I hope we'll, we will each do our part. I hope we all will act. Because that, that is what it means to be in covenant with God. That's what it means to be partners with God. We must work inspired by the values of our tradition to try and make our world more just. And let us say, Amen.